Hey guys, Colin here with Main Street Wolf, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my worst investments ever and how it actually, in a way, turned out to be my best investment ever because of all the lessons I learned from stupid mistakes that I made and, and the assumptions that I made. This is a story that goes back to my high school days, and it all started in my microeconomics class. I forget what year exactly it was, but this was when I was in high school, and we had just started a segment about the stock market. One of the exercises that we decided to do as a class was do a trading simulation game where we started with, I don't know, 10,000 bucks, got to invest in certain stocks, and then after like a month, you know, whoever had the highest returns won the game. I remember winning that game and I was excited, I was confident, I was like, wow, that was, you know, really easy paper trading and I had a really good return. And I thought basically I knew everything about the stock market when in reality I didn't know anything and I was just a stupid high school kid. Uh, so I went home after that competition and decided, hey, you know, if it's that easy to get returns in a simulation, let's see if I can do the same thing with real money. So I went home and I gathered 500 bucks of my own money, which was a lot of money to me back then. And I decided, hey, let's give this a shot. Let's look for a company to invest in and see if I can make some money. The funny part is the fact that out of all the stocks that I could have picked back in, this was probably like 2010, 2011. As of this point, 2017, we've been on this huge bull run. Of all the stocks I could have picked, I picked the, possibly the worst stock. Well, it was the worst stock because the company ended up going bankrupt. And that company was Blockbuster. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, my first stock investment, my first real investment was Blockbuster. It's pretty funny looking back because you might say, oh, why would I ever listen to this guy about financial advice? Because, you know, his first stock investment was Blockbuster. Well, it's honestly not about the first investment. I'm glad I had a terrible investment because by having a bad investment, you learn a lot of lessons. If, you know, I invested in some company that did okay, I would have still had this big head and I would have been overconfident and I could have made these mistakes with more money. $500 looking back, it was the best investment I've ever made because I learned so many lessons and for all my investments going forward, I made sure not to repeat the same mistakes. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the five assumptions that I had before I took a stab at investing and stupidly invested in Blockbuster which ended up going bankrupt like a couple of years later. But I'm kind of going to go deeper into the story and tell you how I made these assumptions and some of the things that hopefully you can share this video with people that are beginning to look to invest because honestly I think these assumptions are made by a lot of people. By watching this video and looking at the lessons I learned from my mistakes, you can maybe not make the same mistakes or whoever you share this video with will not make the same mistakes. The first thing is, I thought with less money, I should invest in a stock with a lower price. Now, looking back, I think the stock was trading around $1. In my mind, with $500, I thought, wow, I can invest in a company and have 500 shares. That sounded like a lot to me. But in reality, stock price doesn't mean anything. You can have a company that's worth a billion dollars, in market cap that's what you should really be looking at to compare companies apples to apples with a hypothetical company with a billion dollar market cap you can have a billion shares outstanding so these are shares that people can own and trade amongst one another and it can be worth one dollar a share or you can have a company that has a thousand shares at a one billion dollar market cap and each stock is trading at $1 million. So you can see the same value of the companies, $1 billion, but the fact that one has a billion outstanding shares and the other one has 1,000 shares, that determines what the stock price is. It was a silly assumption. 
in my mind, I thought, you know, more shares equals, you know, the possibility of making more money. But in reality, I could have bought a company and spent 500 bucks on one share and I would have been in the same boat as owning 500 shares of a $1 stock. Another thing, by only looking at lower priced stocks, I actually turned away other opportunities that I could have had because there's a ton of stocks that are that are priced it, it seems expensive but like I was saying stock price doesn't really matter I could have been looking at stocks worth $100 but in reality I was only looking at stocks that were under $5 because I had this thought more shares is better number two uh, with less money I thought I had to take more risk with $500 didn't really sound like a lot of money. I was trying to turn that $500 into $1,000 or $1,500 or $2,000. And I thought by investing in essentially what was a penny stock because Blockbuster was on the brink of bankruptcy. Everyone knew this. And really their only shot was kind of a comeback story where they turned everything around. And that's what I believed in looking at the past price thinking, wow, if they go back to their glory days, you know, I could make some serious money. I thought with less money, I had to take more risk. What you need to know is by taking more risk, you can just as easily lose all the money. If I invested in some safe company, a high dividend yielding company, or a blue chip stock, something that wasn't going to go to zero, wasn't going to go bankrupt, uh, I would have been in a better boat. Number three is something I kind of just mentioned, but I looked at the past price of Blockbuster and thought it could go back to those previous highs. I'll tell you something, looking at past price means nothing. It doesn't help you in any way. It just gives you this bias, this price bias, thinking, oh, if this company can return to what it was prior to this point in time, I could make double, triple, you know, 10 times the money I invested. The stock market is forward looking. It doesn't care about the past. It doesn't care about what the company was doing. If you look at a company like Radio Shack, any of these companies that end up going bankrupt borders, you know, they have these heydays or Sears Holdings where, you know, there's these mega co companies, mega corporations that people think, oh, there's no way they can continue to fall and eventually go bankrupt. Competitors come in and they end up losing market share and slowly but surely these companies go bankrupt so looking at past price um, is kinda silly number four when the stock price went down I thought um, I should hold instead of just cutting my losses even though as the stock price went from a dollar to fifty cents to thirty cents and you know it was basically obvious that it was gonna go to zero as Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy, but I kept on holding the shares thinking, oh, they might come out of it. I don't want to sell now and lose 70% of my investment. I'm just going to keep on holding and hope they turn around. I'm going to hold it till it either goes to zero or it bounces back to where I invested and maybe get out. Every day of the stock market, the price of that stock is what it's supposed to be. It's priced perfectly. That's the great thing about markets. It's efficient, it's liquid, the market's always right. When you look at a stock and it goes down for five days, it doesn't mean it's going to go up the next day. I kept on thinking I could kind of time the market, time the price, and obviously no one can do that and I couldn't do that either. Something to learn from that is if your thesis or opinion changes on a stock that you own and it's going down cut your losses, don't be afraid to lose 20% of your investment because if you keep on holding, you could end up like me and lose 100% of your investment. Number five was don't trade short term. Um, think of the long term because when I invested this $500, I was thinking very short term. I think I had read some article about Blockbuster coming out with these similar to what Redbox had, which are basically these uh, rental kiosk where you can get movies for a dollar and then you return them to these electronic vending machines and I thought wow Blockbuster has more reach they can put these all over they can compete with Redbox maybe they can compete with Netflix and obviously it was too late at that time they were burning way too much cash they had way too much overhead 
and they were basically doomed. But I read this article. I was like, wow, this is this is great. They could turn around, be, have this huge comeback story. And once again, I was wrong. So something to learn from that is is two things. Don't listen to other people's opinions. Usually they're talking their own books. They own the stock. They're obviously going to be positively biased. Reading articles. There's news coming out about a company. All that's already priced in the stock. Don't think you beat the market to that stock because everything that comes out news related is instantly priced into the stock. The other thing, don't think short term. You're trying to time the market and in a way is kind of like gambling. When you're investing, you're thinking long term. You're thinking, I want to buy this company and I don't even have to look, kind of like Warren Buffett, you don't even have to look at it for 10 years, right? Say you couldn't get out of the investment for 10 years. After 10 years, would you still want to be owning this company? That's how you pick a company that you should invest in. Something that you see growing in the future, innovating, taking more market share, constantly growing because that's what businesses and the stock market's all about. If you can invest in a company that you foresee to continue to grow, then by all means invest in that company. I know that was a lot. Uh, five things that I learned from my first investment in Blockbuster, which ended up going to zero. I lost all the shares. And like I said, probably the best investment I ever made because of all those lessons. Now, when I'm actually making money, I'm out of college, you know, I have a job, and have more disposable income to throw at investments, I'm not making those same mistakes. So I hope people learn from my mistakes and uh, thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed the lessons, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel, Main Street Wolf, where we talk everything money. Thanks guys again for watching and have a great day.